so if things go decently for the first time in a couple days, I guess you'll probably be seeing this go up either late Wednesday night or more like really early Thursday morning, i.e. two days give or take later than it was supposed to go up. Not that I'm really releasing on an EVD schedule but my own anymore, and I guess I did do a bonus show last week so maybe it evens out, but even still, there's something to be said for the consistency. Anyway, I assume I don't need to spend a lot of time detailing the reason for why I wasn't able to get this up sooner in the first place. Alright, move on! Nothing to see here! Please disperse! Nothing to see here, please! In addition to early January being a busy and fatiguing in general, with the holiday hangover phenomenon and the whole plague situation still being a thing, I immediately had plenty of other business to duck into, and it turned out there was some exciting-ish news to watch here in American politics. See, even though our election to president and several seats of the House and Senate ended back in November, two of those Senate races in the state of Georgia were so close that by law they had to do those elections again, and in what's called a runoff on Tuesday night. And for reasons honestly too stupid and convoluted to fully explain in the annoyed and exhausted condition I'm in, our system of government happens to be arranged in such a very stupid, again, way that the outcome of these two races was actually going to decide whether or not the political party whose constituency represents the overwhelming numerical and demographic citizen majority of the country, its most prosperous and populous cities, most economically, culturally, and strategically important states, and whose 2020 candidate just already won the presidency and the majority of seats in the House of Representatives, would actually be allowed to pass even a single piece of legislation that its voters, again, representing by constituency most of the actual people alive in the country wanted to pass. Of course! It was so obvious! Yes, that sequence of words I said made perfect sense. So that was a big spectacle, yeah. The uh, Democrats ultimately won, for the record. And then the next day there was supposed to be the general formality of actually reading off the presidential electoral college votes and certifying that the new guy we already know won, actually won. During which the outgoing president was supposed to speak at this rally for his disappointed dipshit supporters, but then, as you've no doubt heard, all fucking hell broke loose. sheltering as the door is barricaded. Overtaken by Trump supporters. Prepare to get under chairs if necessary. This is an incredibly dangerous situation that's unfolded. This election has not healed the wounds. It is simply... And for my overseas viewers, despite what you may have been conditioned to believe by CBS dramas and Gerard Butler movies, this doesn't actually happen on the regular here. Yeah, there is not a terrorist attack, domestic or otherwise, incited by a delusional moron that someone thought it would be funny to let play president for four years or otherwise on the U.S. Capitol, like, frequently. Even those of us who are not, in fact, surprised that, amazingly, the police all suddenly just forgot how those batons and riot shields and pepper sprays and, you know, guns worked as soon as an actual mob being actually violent staging an actual riot with actual looting showed up but turned out to be mostly white people. Yeah, even people not shocked about that part was still pretty surprised to learn that you apparently can just run up on senators and congressmen and bust through windows in the Capitol, jump on the dais, dress like a dumbass LARPing Viking and not have your skull blown off into a puff of pink mist by an on-call sniper who's always somewhere up on the rafters for exactly this purpose. I mean, for f sake, the Department of Defense budget was like $694.6 billion for 2021. The hell are we spending it on if not that? But, uh, yeah, I, I didn't get the work done because it was kind of hard to concentrate on film, TV, general nerd culture, ephemera, cartoons, whatever, when you're looking at that happening in real time to your country on all the news channels. I mean, I know I'm being kind of glib about this and making some doc jokes because I'm cynical, detached, white nerd on the cusp of middle age who works on the internet and detached Gen X irony is just the way my general processes trauma, and I know that's probably unhealthy, just like I know it's probably in poor taste to be mostly laying the longer stretches of these vocals over footage from movies and video games with action scenes set in Washington, D.C. I mean, maybe it's the right kind of poor taste, where it's disarming and a good distraction. I can't really tell anymore, especially not today, tonight, whatever. I mean, I mean, this is bad. There's just no other way to spin it. Yeah, it could have gone a lot worse, and yeah, there's a theater of the absurd aspect to it where I guess we should almost be grateful, i.e. if you must be in a situation where the soon-to-be ex-president of the United States is this criminal goon trying to avoid litigation, prison, financial destitution, or all three, and to do so he incites a rally of his most devout followers, a huge plurality of whom are white supremacists and or adherents to an internet brainwashing cult. Oh Jesus, here we go. 
that believes a globalist cabal of Jewish billionaires who control the world through the media are actually shape-shifting lizards who consume children's adrenal fluid for immortality into a frenzied mob to carry out a terrorist insurrection on the U.S. Capitol in a show of strength regarding his individual political power versus that of his own party, yeah, I guess it's best to be in the version of that scenario where they're all really, really stupid and can't actually accomplish much other than chaos. Like, I saw more than a few people make the dark joke observation that once the MAGA insurrectionists actually managed to get into the Capitol in their dumbass army surplus cosplay gear, most of them just stood around like morons as if they were waiting for the level to end. <laughs> But, like, chaos is still bad in this scenario. I mean, look, I'm someone who tries to keep what impulses I have toward institutional reverence, I guess would be the phrasing here, segregated into the realms of things that don't really matter or can only matter so much in certain contexts. I've said on the big picture, game overthinker or other shows and writing otherwise, and I stand by having said it, that I think it's honestly a positive development that so much of the 21st century society and collective psyche seems to be moving in the direction where we're transferring the psychological, spiritual function that we once projected onto mythology, folklore, historical hagiography, hey, gods, religion, all of that, over onto fixed of pop culture that we acknowledge up front are fictional, branded entities of capital, and thus are paradoxically less capable of being used to exert genuine, deeper-level authoritarian control over the actual psychological lives of fans the way some other fandoms, quote-unquote, have historically. And again, I mean that sincerely. If it's true that the performance of affirming commitment to an ideal through iconography, collective observation of traditions, ritual, or simply the feeling of sincere and earnest feelings associated with the same are fundamental parts of the human experience for a majority of people, and I see a lot of evidence to suggest that that is the case, I think it's probably much healthier for individuals and for society for people to do the earnest, sincere, irony free let's just enjoy it and not question the why, at least for a little while, ritual, emotional sink-in thing for, like, movies and binging TV shows and sports and games and their favorite books and multimedia fiction universes, and, you know, keep that whole odd, reverent sensibility centered around that stuff so they can be clear-eyed, straight-shooting, cold, cynical, analytical, skeptical of things like politics, news, current events, religious institutions, government institutions, and historical narratives of power involving all of those as possible, because those are the areas where you have to be able to spot the seams and smell the bullshit, because it can be life or death otherwise. Basically, what I mean is, if you have to choose one or the other, be the person who'd be more reluctant to learn a potentially less than heroic piece of trivia about Teddy Ruxpin than you would about Teddy Roosevelt. That having been said, I don't think it's actually possible to learn enough about history and government to be justifiably skeptical or cynical about it in the first place, and not come away with at least some measure of, if not spiritual reverence, certainly appreciation for the symbolism behind what certain places and institutions are supposed to have meant, and why some things are and aren't allowed, how long they've endured. I'm not, as a matter of principle, opposed to, like, flag burning as an act of symbolic protest, for example, but the reason I understand the meaning of the action in the first place is because I understand the meaning of the object in the first place. And this monstrous bullshit on Wednesday at the Capitol with these grunting ogres and their stupid big boy army man costumes and their shit-eating grins and racist slogan t-shirts breaking down windows, shooting up and looting the place, wrecking up people's offices. No, I don't attach some kind of shining city on a hill quasi-religious manifest destiny bullshit to this colony turned colonialist country that is America, but mother that's the capital. You don't do that there. Certainly not for this dumbass reason. I mean, I don't know I go so far to say seeing these ghouls swarming all over these genuinely famous buildings, these important landmarks, these art pieces, these spaces where so much important history is happening. I don't know if I'm saying it's like watching something sacred be violated, but it's not not like that, if that makes sense. Now, I don't know where I'm going with this, to be honest, other than to say that if this, along with the police basically doing nothing to stop them compared to what we all know they'd have been doing, if this was a different, you know, shade of politics, let's say, f***ing enrages you to see playing out, it enrages me as well. I'm f***ing furious. These are images out of bad movies and cheesy TV, and, and worse than that, it's a literal nightmare scenario, in visuals at least, of what myself and so many other people really felt all along and felt like we were trying to warn people about all the way back in 2016 not just from Trump, but if we let anyone representing the deranged, twisted thing that the American right wing has devolved into back into any sort of real power. And I'm not really sure if it's actually better that it's manifesting now as this kind of
kind of impotent death rattle against white red state patriarchy obsolescence, you know, now that the machinery of government is set to just manually cycle Trump out of D.C. in two weeks instead of around the midterms or whatever it might have come earlier, because at least then we might have been first to confront the problem once and for all up front, whereas now I feel like there will be this strong temptation to just let a lot of them slink off to the shadows for four years or the next election and try to move on because the grown-ups need to concentrate on repairing all the damage and making COVID vaccinations happen. What I do know is that I'm sorry that my inability to concentrate on things that aren't this right at this moment meant that an episode was late, and when you finally got one, it was one of these not funny, real-world, cultural musing ones. I didn't want to not deliver content, and turning what actually started as a blog post into an episode script felt like the best option, even if I'm not also sorry it doesn't have some kind of more traditional big-picture tie-in or conclusion. Like I said, I don't fully know how to feel about this right now other than angry and tired, and ready for this part of the story to be over, and that's how I've already felt since about ten months ago. But then, I can only assume that some of you, maybe a lot, maybe most of you, feel the same way, or similar. And if you do, what I guess I can say is that it's okay to feel that, and that apart from just really needing to get this off my chest right in the moment, I am recommitting in 2021 to delivering work that'll entertain and give you something to get your mind off the everything else for a while. I finally got a review of Tenet coming up soon, for example. You might have noticed that my various reviews from prior sites earlier in 2020 are being re-uploaded and remastered format to this channel. Just FYI, it's a big help to us if you click, watch, and share those, even especially if you already saw them before. Uh, guess that's a plug. In any case, staying sharp and aware of the bad things doesn't mean you can't also keep an eye out for the good things. Let's keep that in mind for the new year. I'm Bob, and that's The Big Picture. <laughs>